In this relatively short video, I'm going to run through the names of some covalent compounds and acids that will pop up frequently. Firstly, covalent compounds. What is a covalent compound? Well, we've already dealt with ionic compounds briefly, and we said that they're formed when a cation, a positively charged ion, and an anion attract each other. And usually this happens between a metal and a non-metal. Well, if you look at the compounds here, you'll notice that they're all made of non-metal elements joined together. When non-metal atoms bond, they do it by sharing electrons rather than by forming ions. The details of how the bonding occurs we can leave for later. For now, you need to remember only that covalent compounds are made from non-metal atoms only, and they don't involve ions. So let's look through them. All of these turn out to be gases. Carbon monoxide is the colourless toxic gas that's produced in exhaust, and it's an indication that fuel isn't burning completely. Carbon dioxide is what you get when fuel does burn completely, that means when there's plenty of oxygen around. It's not toxic, but it's suffocating, but it's a fuel source for plants and it is an important greenhouse gas in our planet's atmosphere. Dinitrogen monoxide is laughing gas, it has an anaesthetic effect and is often used by dentists or as pain relief for women giving birth. Sulfur trioxide is a gas pollutant and one of the compounds that produces acid rain when it combines with rainwater. Ozone is another toxic gas, but the layer of it that exists high in the atmosphere fulfills a vital role. It absorbs UV radiation from the sun before it gets down to us on the surface. Hydrogen sulfide is rotten egg gas. Uh, methane is the primary component of what we call natural gas, and it's also produced by bacteria and in farts. Detecting methane is one of the tasks of the Curiosity rover that NASA sent to Mars. Uh, it's up there now, um, since it's thought that uh, this will give us a clue as to whether there is or was any forms of life on Mars. And ammonia is often dissolved in water and used as a cleaning product. It has a very distinctive, pungent, sharp smell, and most of the world's production of ammonia is used to produce the fertilizer ammonium nitrate. You may also notice, if you look closely, that the naming's not unlike ionic naming, except for one thing. Whereas in the ionic names we simply gave the names of the ions, without mentioning how many ions were present, in covalent compounds we use prefixes like mono, di, and tri to specify how many atoms there are. So for instance, CO is carbon monoxide, um, meaning one oxygen monoxide, and CO2 is carbon dioxide, di meaning two. The reason this is necessary is that nonmetal atoms are often able to combine in different ratios, CO and CO2 for instance, whereas ions can't do this. There are no hard and fast rules to learn here. I'd simply advise you to become familiar with these compounds, because they will turn up. And here's a list of the acids that will also appear from time to time. The first three are the most important, nitric acid, sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid, because you're going to come across the, them in the lab uh, over and over again. But you will also encounter the others, whether just in theory, like hydrofluoric acid, which is too dangerous for us to handle, or also in practice, like carbonic acid, which is what's in soda water. So they're worth knowing. Make sure you can write the formula from the name and know the name just by looking at the formula. It's worth noting if that if you were giving them names according to the patterns you've already learnt, you'd probably call nitric acid hydrogen nitrate and sulfuric acid hydrogen sulfate. This is the most common error that people make in naming acids, and the reason it's frowned upon is that the properties of acids in particular are so distinctive and so important that their names need to indicate that they're acids. Uh, so here's a quick task uh, to test your memorization. Fill in the blanks in the table where there are names and formulae missing. And if you've got the inclination, there's a quick research task for you. Find out the origin of ammonia's name. You can do this by Googling. Uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't follow the normal naming conventions. It's an old historical name and it's got quite an interesting etymology.